Today we're going to take a look at the Toolbox plugin, which is now available on the Unreal Marketplace. I'm going to touch on a few nice features that this plugin has, just a few things that I use the most out of this plugin, and I'm also going to share a few use cases that I think Unreal developers will find super useful or might just make the development process a little bit easier. So the first node that we're going to talk about is the random string by weight node. And actually we have a bunch of different types of random things by weight, so it can do a random int and I can also do a random float by weight. So what exactly do I mean by weight? Well, weight is basically the probability that it will return a certain index from both of these arrays. So I'm gonna put two arrays into this. So one of them will be a string array, and the other one can be a float array. The way this works is these two kind of work in unison. So whatever you put on this array element will also work with this array element. So what I can do is we'll maybe have it select We'll do copper, we'll do silver, and we will do gold. So what we're doing is we're picking the probability that these will occur. And the probability is based on the sum of all of the added floats together. So it doesn't really have to be up to 100% or any number, it can kind of be anything. So we can say there's a, we can say that copper has a probability of 1,000. And we could say that silver has a probability of maybe 500. And we could say that gold has a probability of 100. And then we can print that string. And begin play. Maybe we'll print a couple of them. We'll do a loop. And maybe we'll print five different return values from the random string by weight. And we'll see if we get a majority. We should, theoretically, get a majority of copper a little bit of silver, and gold will become a little bit more rare. So let's go see how that works. So we can see right there, we have uh, one, two, three, four coppers and two silvers and zero golds. So we probably won't have a lot of gold because it's more rare than everything else. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll print 15 different things. We'll see what those are. Seeing a lot of silver, some copper, and I see one, two golds in there. So I think silver is a bit too common. With this node, the cool thing is you can easily turn down the commonness just by going in and editing the number. So I'll just do 250. And if you maybe have some kind of data table that contains the probability that an item can be returned by this, you know, you could set up a lot of different things. You could set up a store system, or you could set up some kind of spawn system that spawns things randomly. And there we're seeing copper a lot more often now and just one gold out of all 15. So that's the first node. I really like the random string by weight node. It's, it's really useful for items and how you can choose the probability and rarities for each item. The next node is my personal favorite, and this is the sort floats node. This is super, super useful. This is good for making leaderboards. This can be good for any kind of sorting whatsoever. And I'm going to explain kind of how the sort node works. So on begin play... I'm just going to feed it an array of uh, floats. And these floats are going to be just all over the place. So I just kind of randomly threw some things together. Uh, very unsorted. And what the idea is, is it's going to sort all five of these array elements. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, we'll just do a for each. For each loop. And for each of the sorted, we will print them to the screen. Uh, in chronologically, since it's a for each loop, and it's going to be sorted in order. Just do a print, and we'll just print what that value is. So, now you can see from top to bottom, the top being the highest and the bottom being the lowest, it is sorting these correctly. What can you do with that really though? I mean, like we have a, we have a second value here. I wanna kind of explain what this second value is for and, and why it exists. Uh, if you don't understand just by looking at it, uh, the thing that makes this really nice is this indices array is the old indices from this array. So what that means is if I print these, what's going to happen is it's going to print these in order, but it's going to take the old order from the original array and those array indexes will be returned here. So essentially what you can do there, so we'll have 4, 3, 0, 2, 1. So we'll see 4, 3, 0, 2, and one. So with that, using the original order, if you were just using a player score system, for example, you could actually go back to an old unsorted array of players where you got the scores from in the first place, get a reference using this array element, and get the original value where it came from. So then you can really sort anything. It's not just sorting floats. You can sort anything as long as it has a float value attached to it. 
The next node I'm going to do is actually two nodes. It's going to be the even node and the odd node. And essentially what you can do with these is you just, well, you put in an integer and it tells you if it's even and odd. But I'm going to give you a good use case and actually the main reason that I actually use this node. It's actually in a widget blueprint. What I have here is a small list and this list will add rows and each of the rows are going to kind of be the same color. And it's only going to be adding 10 rows and you don't know which row is going to be the other row. So to make things more readable, we're going to set the other row to an off color. So how do you get that other row? Well, we just take the index for the for loop or for each loop, whichever we're using, and do a odd or even. Doesn't matter really what you use. You can use any branch. And if that is true, we'll go ahead and just get the image that I had originally set here. And we can set the color and opacity. Now this will only happen for the odd numbers, so it'll only happen every other index. So now I can set this to a new color, compile and save, and when we add that to the viewport, we should see exactly what we're looking for. And there we go. So for each of the items on the list, it's going to be an off color every other item that's on the list because, well, after we make our loop and create the item widget, we can return if that value is actually odd in the list. Another node in here that I really like is the easy line trace node. Now the reason this is so cool is because I'm sure you've been through the process before where you have to get the forward and rotation vectors and then add them together and you run your line trace. Well this line trace node is the same thing as a line trace by channel node except instead of having a start point and an end point you just have an origin component and it uses the forward vector of that origin component. So I can take the follow camera on a third person character and use it as the origin component. We can set a distance to a value of maybe 5000 and we'll debug persistent. On the left mouse button we'll just go ahead and draw that on the screen and it should be nice and easy. It does demand that you use the ignore node though, so we're going to go ahead and make an array and we're just going to set this to nothing, and then that should be fine. So now every time I left click, I can draw my line trace very easily without having to really do too much thinking with vectors. The last node that I'm going to cover is the for each latent loop node, and I'm sure just looking at this node, a lot of people are probably going to be confused as to how to use it or even why it exists, and I'm going to show you why it exists right now. Right here I have a very, very simple function. On begin play, I have an array of just five numbers, and we'll say every second it's going to return one of those, right? So it should do one, then a second later it'll return two, then a second later it'll return three, four, five, and so on. But it does not do that. When I play, I wait, and then it does five. Just five. It doesn't do the rest. So to fix that, what I can do is I can delete the for each loop node, and instead use the for each latent loop node, plug this into the loopback, plug this into the array, and take our array element, and then we can use this exit. And what it's expecting is a loop back into it by just doing that. And now we kind of have this funky looking loop, but it will do what we need it to do. So I press play, we wait, there goes one, two, three, four, and then five. So kind of a fun node, kind of interesting. And all this stuff is designed to make the workflow a little bit easier, so I hope you check out the plugin, and I would really appreciate it if you guys could try it out, take a look at it, and let me know if it makes your workflow a little bit easier. Thank you so much for checking out the video, thanks for checking out the plugin, and I'll see you in the next one.